All right, let me test this out. Um, hi. What content do you want to create? Please give a brief. I want to... So I want to showcase the success story of a marketing automation consultant. So let me see what happens. And ideally it would go now and create a video and a text. So this would be a video for Instagram and a caption for the same. So let's see what I'm gonna get as an output. So as of now, I believe that the video will be about eight seconds long and the text would be, I don't know, probably I selected big, so I don't know how big it is. So we'll have to wait and see. And if you want to know more about the setup itself, we have a start node here. This is a starting point. There is nothing you can do about this. This is present in any canvas. Your work starts after this, right? So on the left hand side, you have a bunch of uh, options here. Like there are two types of nodes here. One is AI agent and one is a sequential node. Inside AI agent, you can add things like search the web and MCP server and all. Okay, let's go and see what happens. All right, here is my video. By streamlining workflows, we not only save time, but also significantly boost our client engagement and conversion rates. Right, that's not too bad for an eight second video. And then you have a long caption and along with hashtag, not too bad. And then you have a placeholder where you can replace the consultant name. So if you improve your prompt, probably this is gonna get better. So let me quickly walk you through these steps. So I have added a sequential node, which you can get from here, just get a sequential node, and then you can add a bunch of stuff inside. So that's what we are gonna do. The first thing I added is a capture text input. So that you can find here. So you can add a text input. You can ask for a single choice, which is a drop down, or you can capture the phone number or email address. All of this can be added inside a sequential node and this would work in sequence. So whichever is on top would be executed first and then so on. So here I asked for a text input. So then we are going to use that text input in our next nodes. So if you go here, this is another sequential node. So inside this, I have a video generation. And if you double click on this, it will open up. So I have given a short prompt here so that it will create a short video clip based on the input that we give. So now if you go here and if you look at this, I have given the variable name as content underscore input. So if you go here and you see that I'm using that same variable. So if you click here, you get access to the variable. So it will be on the runtime variable. So you can see content input is a variable that is accessible. And if you want to add some other global variables, you can do so by selecting from here. And if you, if you have an input variable, then you can select that from here. So you can do all of that. So that's how the video is generated. Now we go into the text generation. You double click, I have a very similar prompt. I'm using the input content input as my dynamic variable inside here. And then I'm selecting either small or big text length. So I have selected the big text length. So that is suitable for an Instagram caption. So these are the two things I have added and you can see that this has executed in a sequential order. So you have first the video and then the text. And then if you want an image, you can just drag and drop it inside this. And then you add your prompt in here. Once you have a prompt, click save, and then you will get an image generated as well. So that's how this sequential node works. And then there's something that you need to understand as well. Like there is a connection. So if I delete this and if I delete this, you would see that uh, it, now these are not connected. And now I can click on this and connect here. And then after the starting of this node, when you click on test it, the first box will execute and then you can connect this. But there is a problem as of now, you need to add a condition. So, so one of the product managers told me that uh, there's a workaround because some of the conditions doesn't really work. So they are still updating this. So what I've been doing is that I'm using this content input and then I am saying that not equal to space. So whenever I'm typing something into this input, 
that becomes not equal to the space, which means that this branch will always run. This is more of a workaround, but for now, this is how you can do it. I, I believe that very soon there is going to be a, a branch that runs with no conditions. So until then, this is probably a good workaround and click save. And then this connects to the next one. And then this executes in sequence. So now you also have things like MCP server. So if you click on MCP server, you get access to the GHL native MCP server. All you have to do is add your bearer token and location ID. And once you've done that, if you click here, you can see all the tools that you have access to. Now you can actually create a blog post, update a blog post and do a lot of things with the contacts and location itself. And you can also do something with social media posting as well. So this is getting pretty cool. I haven't tested this one out, but there is no point in testing this out right now because some of the things are actually, so they, the team is going to release a few more features such as the router and non-conditional branches and so on. But for now, if you want to build like a social media content creation agent, you can do so by following this exact step. And, and then you can also add an end node at the end. So if you want to finish the workflow, you can add an end node with a condition. Again, you have to figure out what sort of conditions you want to apply here. For now, you can do the same thing. You can select the variable and then make it not equal to space. So that should work, but I'm, I don't want to add an end node now. So let me delete that. And then you can also add AI agent. And then inside AI agent, you can add a prompt you add some sort of prompt here, depending on your requirement, and then you get AI agent. Inside AI agent, you can add search uh, the web. So you can ask for, um, please search, please get more details on, and then you can select the variables. So if you want to get more details on the content input, you can add that in and then you can click save if you want to add a query you can add that as well but that's optional and the ai agent would automatically update that and this would give you some sort of web search capability and again if you want to connect it you want to go through the same workaround not equal to space and click save so now these are all connected and once this is done this will move on to this next step. So this is the very early days of Agent Studio and this is the very basic of it. So I created this video in case you are excited about Agent Studio and you want to get started with this just like I did. But the real power of AI Agent Studio will come in the coming days. So we are looking forward to it. So if you have any questions regarding whatever you're seeing here, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to help. So I'll see you in the next one. Thank you and bye.